Okay, today I wanted to talk about uh, differentials, okay, versus differences, and also to start introducing the chain rule for multivariate functions, okay? Let's go back to Calc 1 just real fast here. Suppose that y equals f of x is a differentiable function at each point in its domain here. Let's talk about the difference between the change in y or the change in the function value versus dy. So delta y is an actual change in the function. What's dy? You're using dy dx all the time. dy is the change in the tangent line approximation to the function at any particular point. Okay, so suppose I have the graph of a function here. Do you see this here? I'll put arrows on the end of it here. Here's a nice smooth function. So that's a nice differentiable function. Y is a function of x. Y equals f of x. I've got a point on that uh, curve here. Okay, I'm just calling that x, y. Okay, uh, think of x as being fixed for now. And now I'm going to take a nearby point here. Okay, I'm going to take a value. I'm going to make a small change in x. x is going to change from x to x plus dx. Now, some people could use a delta x there, but we're just going to use a dx, a change in the independent variable. And there's really, by the way, I should mention this, if you're talking about the independent variable, there's really no difference between a change delta x and dx, okay? So I'm using my change in x as dx, okay? Anyways, so I've got a second point over here on the curve, uh, x plus dx, y plus delta y, right? Okay, because uh, this has led to a certain change in the actual function value. Over here, I'm at the point x, y. Here, I'm at the point x plus dx, y plus delta y. Now, <clears throat> delta y, you can see visually here, is the change in the y direction, right? That's what this guy is. That's what I'm trying to do here. Now, since this is a what? Uh, supposed to be a differentiable function, over here at the original point x, y, there should have been a tangent line, which I'm calling L. Maybe I should have called it T or something, but I called it L. Okay, this is the tangent line to the curve over here at the original point. Now, when we went from x to x plus dx, there's going to be a change in the actual function value, delta y, but there's usually also going to be what? A change in the value of the tangent line function, right? Uh, this tangent line, if it's not vertical, right, is going to have a change in the y direction typically, okay, which is non-zero if it's not a horizontal line. And that change could be what? It, we're going to write this way is dy. That's what we mean by dy. What's dy? dy is the change in what? The tangent line approximation function and delta y is the actual change in the function, okay? So that's the difference between delta y and dy. We call what? dy a differential change, okay? Again, you might keep this in mind also, okay? There's really no difference when we're talking about uh, changes in independent variables, okay? So when I'm talking about an independent variable change, I will usually just use a dx, okay? Assuming x is the independent variable, <laughs> okay? Delta y here I've defined is what? f plus dx minus f of x. That's a change in the function. Okay, what's dy? Well, dy is actually what? The slope of the tangent line to the curve over here, which is what? f prime evaluated at x. Maybe I should have made that x naught or something because that's a definite numerical value, right? Okay, it changes, but at any particular point, it's a definite numerical value. So maybe I should make that uh, x naught there. These are little subscript zeros there everywhere. This would be y subscript zero. Okay. All right. Well, just imagine that everywhere. Anyway, so the uh, what would this be? This would be the slope of the tangent line to the curve. Uh, the change in the x is dx, right? So what's going to be the change in the y along the tangent line? It's going to be what? The slope times the change in x, that's our dy, okay? Now you recognize this, dy over dx is f prime, right? Okay, this is the differential, quote-unquote. That's supposed to be an L, okay? 
Now, to be differentiable, okay, we imagine this. Well, these are not equal in general, right? Delta y and dy, they're different. Okay, there's a difference between those as well. But the difference between those two is some error function times dx, okay, where the error function goes to zero as dx goes to zero. That's what defines differentiability, okay? That's what defines differentiability. If you go back to our original limit definition of the derivative, you'll see that this uh, makes good sense, okay? All righty. All right, because in the original definition, you'd have the change in y divided by the change in x, which is what? Delta y over delta x equals dy over dx plus epsilon. And then you're going to take the limit as dx approaches 0. And that would mean that uh, <coughs> the rate of instantaneous rate of change is dy over dx plus, well, epsilon's going to 0, so that goes to 0. So... The instantaneous rate of change of the function is the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that point, okay? Now, what about the case where we go uh, a function of two variables, okay? Can we talk about differentials there and stuff, okay? So I assume uh, z equals f of x, y is differentiable. That means it has, what, a well-defined tangent plane at each point on this surface, okay? So this is a smooth surface, quote-unquote. Okay, the change in z is going to be what? Uh, the change in the function here, I'm starting at the original point. Again, maybe I should have used subscripts here. Okay, but this is going to be a function in the end. Okay, so these are subscript with zero. But anyway, uh, I've, do you see I've got a change in x and y? Okay, I've got a change in x being dx and a change in y being dy. Okay, again, I'm coming up here and making this point about this guy, right? The change in x. Here, what are the independent variables? The independent variables are x and y, and z is the dependent variable. So I'm going to make my changes in x and y be what? d's, dx, dy. Okay? All right, so this should be clear. Okay, uh, what would dz be? dz would be what? Not the change in the chant the tangent line, this would be the what? The change in the z direction for the tangent plane. Now, we defined that uh, in a previous video here. If you actually go back and look at that, the change in, along the tangent plane would be this. f sub x evaluated at uh, x naught y naught times the change in x plus f sub y evaluated at the point x naught y naught dy. Okay. This would be the total differential, okay? That means what? So what does that mean? The change in the z direction for the tangent plane, okay? Approximation to the surface at that particular point, x not y not. Okay, what does it mean to be differentiable, again, for a function of two variables? If this what? If uh, f sub x plus dx, y plus dy is the original function value, plus what? The differential change. Okay. All right. So f sub x, x, y, dx, plus f sub y times dy. And then what? I said we have errors at the end. An error 1, dx, plus an error 2, dy, where what? Epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 go to 0. Why didn't I write that? Okay. Epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 go to 0. Okay, both those errors go to zero as what? As both dx and dy go to zero. Okay. Um, now, an equivalent formulation that I've actually put in parentheses there, and so I said some books, this is dy, approaches zero. In some books, they will express this the following way. They'll just imagine this uh, that I've underlined to be like a vector, and they're just saying the magnitude of this vector is uh, some epsilon times the what magnitude of the vector dx comma dy. That could be an exercise for you to show that these are what actually equivalent ways of formulating differentiability. It's just saying as what these go to zero, that single epsilon function defined this way goes to zero, 
okay? All right, but we're going to use it this way, okay? We're not going to use uh, use this this technique there, okay? All righty, um, let's go ahead and consider something real quickly with differentiability. Okay, I've just created a function. f sub x, y is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared plus 7x, okay? Now, suppose I replace x by x plus dx, y by y plus dy. So I'm just substituting those in there, okay? So I'm just sticking them right into the function, as you can see there, okay? And now what I'm going to do is gather the various terms together. Uh, the original terms here, those are all the terms without any dy or dx on them, okay? Does that, you recognize what's in front, by the way? That's our original function, yeah, okay? Then I gather all the terms that have dx alone on them, not dx dy, but just dx on them, okay? And uh, this is what we have here, 2x plus 2y plus 7, okay? So you can do this algebra yourself. There's the ones with just the dy on them, and then there's some with what? Uh, we've got a dx squared, really? And we've got a dy dx, and we've got a dy squared. So just gather these up this way, this way. Okay? Now I want you guys to recognize something. Do you see this fellow right here? Okay, what is that? You guys think about that. That's actually a partial derivative of the function with respect to x. Okay, do it. How about this right here, this part? What is that? That's the partial derivative of the function with respect to y. Now, we could gather these together, these remaining parts together, any way we wanted here, okay? Um, these, let's see, these two, okay? And I could write it this way, uh, epsilon 1, this is dx plus 2 dy, and what, epsilon 2, this is dy. Notice that both these go to 0 as what? dx dy goes to zero. What does this prove? This proves that this function up here is what? Differentiable. Okay? Uh, it's not hard to show. I mean, it'd be hard to write out all the details, but in theory, it wouldn't be hard to show that what? Any polynomial in x and y is going to be differentiable. And the overwhelming majority of functions that we're going to be creating are differentiable. You're not going to have to prove it every time or anything like that. I'm just illustrating it here for you this one time. Okay? Alrighty. Let's talk about something else called the chain rule. So let's get really in, into some computational stuff. Okay? Now, you guys remember what the chain rule was. That involved what? Uh, differentiating compositions of functions, right? Now, it's going to be the same idea here for the chain rule. Okay, I've got a function z is a function of x and y, and I'm going to be assume this is just differentiable everywhere. Say, so have no problem taking derivatives here. Okay, and then I'm going to have x is a function of t, and y is a function of t. These are also going to be differentiable functions for some open interval of, uh, you know, the, the t-axis, okay? Maybe even everywhere. Alrighty. You can see that if I compose these, you can see that I would have what? z is ultimately a function of what? t, right? Because x is a function of t and y is a function of t, okay? And the question is, does that make z a differentiable function of t alone? That would be like a calc 1 yeah, question, right? Okay, but it's going to take a lot more than calc 1 here to answer this question here. Okay, does this exist? If it does, what is it? Okay. All right. I guess I broke with tradition here. I had the independent variable. I should have probably had that go what from the t to t plus dt, but I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, well, I have the following. f of x plus, of x of t plus delta t, y plus, y of t plus delta t. Okay. So this is going to be what? There's going to be a change in x and there's going to be a change in y. Right. But since f of x, y is differentiable, I can write this this way. Okay? Alrighty? So here's my tangent plane. And then I've got these errors at the end, right? 
okay? And we know those go to zero as delta x, delta y approaches zero. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to take this thing, this would be the change in the function, and I'm going to divide it by what? The change in t, and take the limit as delta t approaches zero, okay? Take the limit as delta t approaches zero. I'm going to divide by delta t all the way through here, okay? Now, delta z would be what? The difference between the function here and the function up here, right? So I take that difference, that's what I'm calling delta z, and then I'm dividing by delta t, okay? So I would have what? I'd be dividing this term by delta t, and that term there by delta t, and these guys by delta t, okay? Now I'm going to take the limit as delta t approaches zero. So I'm just, what, using the definition of the derivative from calc 1, but I'm combining it with differentiability of a function of two variables there. Okay, anyway, so we've got f sub x right here, and then we've got delta x over delta t, and then f sub y times what? Delta y over delta t, and then the same thing with these guys, okay? Now when I take the limit here, you can see I'm just going to get what? f sub x here, since delta t is approaching zero, this would be the function uh, f sub x evaluated at the original point, and the same thing here. <clears throat> Since uh, x is a differentiable function of t in the limit, this becomes what? dx over dt, and the same thing over here with y is a differentiable function of t, so that becomes dy over dt. Uh, these end up being what? dx over dt and dy over dt, respectively. But what about these guys, the epsilons? The epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 goes to 0. So I've got zeros in there. And the limit ultimately becomes this. dz over dt becomes f sub x times dx over dt plus f sub y dy over dt. Okay, so this is a form of the chain rule. If you want to write it with the uh, del symbols or nablas here, Here's another way of writing it. So this is going to be our chain rule where the original functions are functions of a single independent variable here. Notice that I'm using what? D's here, right? Because what? Y is an actual function of the single variable T, and so is X. Whereas what? I need partial derivatives on these guys because what? This is just a function of both X and Y, so is this one over here. Okay, well, well, that's why I have it over there. Okay, different ways of writing it. So here's three different ways people might write it here. The differential change in Z being this thing, okay? All right, let's take an example. This is in your book 219 here. Z is a function of X and Y. X equals R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta. Okay, so what does this remind you of? Which makes you think of polar coordinates. Does this work? Well, I just wrote this just to show you some nonsense that students might write. dz over dr, okay? This doesn't make any sense, okay? This is a partial derivative of z with respect to r, okay? Because I'm thinking here that r and theta are independent variables. So if you see something like this here, you can't use the chain rule in this way up here because they're not total derivatives, right? So you'd actually, it works the same way, but you're going to use partial derivatives. Okay. All right. All right. I just want you to be aware of that. We'll be doing some more problems like this in here. Just be wary that you, do you know when to write partial derivatives and when to write what? Total derivatives. When to write d's and when, when to write nablas or dells, if you like that word there. Okay, let's go back to our uh, original type of question up here, though. Okay, one of these. Let's come up here. Suppose z is the tangent inverse of x over y, and uh, x happens to be e to the t power, and y ends up being what? Cosine of t. Okay? I can talk about dz over dt, right? So these are differentiable functions of t. Okay, and this is a differentiable function, at least in some places some values of x and y, okay? So I could talk about the, what, the derivative dz over dt. Not, I'm not using 
del symbols, I'm using what? Ds, right? That makes sense here. There's only a single independent variable here. And what is that single independent variable? It's t. Okay? So z is ultimately a function of t. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and use the chain rule. dz over dt should be what? Partial derivative of z with respect to x times what? dx over dt plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, dy over dt. Okay, now you have to remember how to differentiate that with respect to x and y. Okay, I hope you remember how to do that. This ends up being 1 over 1 plus x over y squared times 1 over y e to the t plus 1 over 1 plus uh, x over y squared negative x over y squared negative sine t. Okay, so can you work these out? Okay, if you can't see those obviously here, remember this is a composition and you're differentiating with respect to x and y. Okay, holding one constant in one case, the other constant in the other case. Okay, so you should be able to do these. And then let's clean this up just a little bit. I multiplied by uh, y squared over y squared here. So I get y e to the t over x squared plus y squared. Uh, the double negative makes positive, so I've got plus x sine t over x squared plus y squared. Putting those together, we got this uh, final answer here. So that's the instantaneous rate of change of z with respect to t. Uh, notice that my answer is been expressed in a mixed way involving both what? x and t. If I wanted to, I could go back and what? Replace x by e to the t and y by a cosine of t for my final answer. But uh, I don't think I will. I'll just leave it this way and I'll probably expect you to do the same thing on the exams. Okay? All right, so don't go to more work than you need to do. Alrighty, well, this should be a pretty good introduction to the chain rule. We'll do some more in the next video.